Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, wherever you may uh, join us from. Uh, thank you very much for joining this uh, webinar, which is the, the Bitnami KubeCon recap. Uh, we're going to be together for 30 minutes, roughly, and we have uh, a great little agenda uh, put together for you with some great demos. So I hope you can hear me well and that you can see the slides. And uh, if you cannot, just say something and then our moderator will just uh, shout out to me and tell me that there's something wrong. But I hope that uh, you know everything is good, that you can hear me well, you can see the slides. Okay, so it's uh, two past the hour. Now that uh, the few laggards have joined, we can get started. Let's go. The KubeCon recap by Bitnami. So I'm Sebastian Kwaskin. I'm the Kubernetes tech lead uh, for Bitnami. And joining me is Araceli Pulido. Ara. Ara is our engineering manager for the Kubernetes squad. Hello, Ara. Hello, everyone. Thanks a lot for joining. Thank you, Ara. So Ara and I work closely together, and we're going to give you this, uh, this little uh, recap. I'm going to talk mostly about Kubeless and give you a demo about Kubeless and the great announcement that uh, we did with Kubeless 1.0.0. And then Ara will take over and talk about Cube Apps because we also announced Cube Apps 1.0.0. Perfect timing, two same release number for our two big open source projects. Okay, so before we dive though into Kubeless and Cube Apps specific, uh, if you missed KubeCon, it was a great event in Copenhagen, amazing town, everybody had a good time. Two days, three days packed with uh, talks, uh, booths, uh, birds of the feather, parties. And what is really amazing is that the community has grown immensely since the beginning of Kubernetes. I remember in 2015 being in uh, San Francisco for the first one, there was under 400 people. And in Copenhagen, there was 4,300 people, 4,300 people. So that's 10x since the beginning of uh, Kubernetes days, okay? Uh, the main takeaways in terms of announcements, I just put a, a snapshot of a slide that was presented at the uh, CNCF, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation Technical Oversight Committee meeting. Oof, it's a mouthful. CNCF TOC meeting and they recapped uh, Cloud Native Con as well. Uh, Quinton Hull is the new uh, CNCF storage working group lead. Quinton uh, used to be at Google, now he's at Huawei and he's a, a member of the Kubernetes uh, governance committee. So now he's uh, the lead of the CNCF uh, storage working group. There was a big newcomer at KubeCon, Ballerina, uh, which comes from uh, the WSO2 company. They announced a cloud native programming language. So definitely check out ballerina.io. Vitesse won an award. And remember that Vitesse is the distributed uh, database, now part of CNCF. Uh, there was also the first release of cloud events, a new spec for events that are happening in the cloud, and that's the product of the serverless working group. Uh, .mesh from uh, my, uh, you know, the, the great team, Luke Marsden, they announced the Kubernetes operator. Uh, JFrog, we worked very closely with JFrog, Bitnami, and, uh, and we integrated JFrog Artifactory in Cube Apps, and maybe Ara is going to show you that integration. They announced other thing with uh, CDK and so on. So, you can see on these slides, lots of announcements from all the different members of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Very, very exciting conference. Um, <coughs> excuse me, I'm a little bit under the weather. Uh, Kubeless is what we call the Kubernetes Native Serverless Solution. It's one of our big projects um, at Bitnami. Uh, it's function as a service. So if you wanna do serverless on-prem, uh, AKA FAS, a function as a service, then you can use Kubeless and deploy it inside your Kubernetes cluster. Uh, supports Python, Node.js, Ruby, Golang, Microsoft just released a new, uh, a new runtime for .NET support. We have a serverless plugin. We now support cloud events, the new spec. Uh, we work very closely with SAP to develop this, uh, 
this integration with, with cloud events. And, and then also we have integration with uh, triggers, NATS triggers, we call that. I'm going to expand on that and, and, and give you a demo. So Kubeless, in, uh, at KubeCon, we announced uh, 1.0.0. So maybe you came to my talk on securing function, which was not entirely uh, Kubeless, but it was definitely uh, using Kubeless as a way to exemplify how you secure functions. But what we, what we did in 1.0.0, we announced support for Golang. So that was a, a big thing. You know, most serverless solutions out there, they support interpreted languages, Python, no Ruby. Uh, and Golang is our first uh, supported compiled language. So we are very excited to support Golang. And since KubeCon, you know, we also now landed a pull request to support Java. Not, you know, not JavaScript, Java. So that's uh, very exciting. And all of this is the result of a ton of effort that we did in the uh, refactoring. Uh, we can also support pure Docker images. You know, of course, that's what we call custom runtime. So funnily enough, you know, if you take the a project like OpenFAS, you know, all the OpenFAS function can actually run in Kubeless as a, a custom runtime. We also announced uh, support for NATS events. What does that mean? It means that you know once you deploy a function, uh, you can call that function over over HTTP. That's what we call an HTTP trigger, and that's the typical scenario of having a webhook or HTTP endpoint. But you can also call that function when there is an event in the in a messaging system. So NATS is you know one of the you know very efficient messaging system out there these days, uh, written in GoLang. Originally, we supported Kafka, but now we've decoupled our runtime and our event management, which uh, allows us to support many different types of event triggers. And that was the first that we, uh, we advertised as part of this KubeCon 1.0.0 release. And I'm going to give you a demo uh, just you know, after this slide uh, about using another type of trigger. So you're going to have the, the prime time here. Nobody has seen this demo but me. So thanks for joining. That's what you get for joining. You're going to see something prime time. Hopefully it's gonna work. Um, and then at KubeCon, we also demoed uh, an integration with Falco uh, from Sysdig. Falco is an open source uh, security alerting uh, solution. You run Falco as a daemon set in your Kubernetes clusters, and then you can write some security rules using their uh, YAML-like uh, syntax. And when Falco detects something, it publishes a message to Nats and because it publishes a message in NATS, then it can call a function. So the demo that we did with the sysdig was to have a rule that was monitoring uh, your Kubernetes cluster for possible Bitcoin miners, looking at the type of processes that were running, the type of ports that were used. And when we were detecting a, a rogue Bitcoin miner, then we were calling a function which was killing the pod running the Bitcoin miner. Yeah, that was very exciting. Check out the check out the Sysdig blogs. It's a uh, you know very very nice uh, integration. So without further ado, let's go to the Kubeless demo where I'm going to demo you something prime time, which is an MQTT triggering of a Kubeless function. What does that mean? So let me show you. So I am here on Minikube quite easily. I have a Minikube uh, running in my uh, laptop here. I'm going to look at all the pods that are running. Oops, let me, okay, let's do it like this. Let's uh, zoom out. You see that I have a, what's called a tr NATS trigger controller. I have the kubeless controller. I have a NATS cluster here running, you see, with the NATS operator, but I'm not going to show you the, the NATS triggering system. I'm actually going to show you how to trigger a function when there is an event sent to an MQTT uh, broker, okay? MQTT is uh, the, the, the IoT, the leading IoT protocol. Uh, they're heavily developed by uh, IBM. And IoT is one of the big use cases for serverless. So in Kubeless, it makes total sense for us to find a way to be able to call the functions when there is an event being sent to a MQTT broker. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, and I'm, I'm going to show you the source later. I'm going to run an MQTT broker in my cluster. The leading MQTT broker is called Mosquito. 
uh, and I found an image from a guy named Toki because the uh, actual Eclipse Foundation image uh, um, was, uh, was out of date. Looks like I already have a service uh, exposing that deployment. So let me look at the service. Yes, there is already a MQTT service. Let me check my endpoints. And you know, I hope that you know Kubernetes and you're going to be able to follow everything I'm doing. So you see that now I have a MQTT pod running and that pod is now, you know, that deployment is now exposed by a Kubernetes service. So I have a MQTT broker, okay? Perfect, I have an MQTT broker running. This is fine. And now I wanna deploy a, a function. So I'm going to go to a, a different tab and I'm going to look at a basic uh, Python function. You see, it's a very, very simple Python function. I'm going to deploy this function with kubeless. Kubeless function deploy, let's call it foo. And you know, from file foo.py, this is the typical CLI of kubeless. Runtime, this is a Python 2.7 function. And the handler is uh, the file, the base name of the, the file, plus the method name, okay? And that's it, we deploy that function. This is very much like a Google Cloud function and AWS uh, CLI. So now I can do kubeless function ls, and I see that I have a function running. Under the hood, what does kubeless do? It watches a custom resource definition, launches a deployment, creates a service, and now you see that I have a foo pod. Inside that foo pod, I have my function, which is a, you know, this basic here, uh, echo, you know, function, okay? If you look at the custom resource definition in the system, you see that you have a function CRD, that's the, where we write our function objects. But you see that I also have new CRDs. This is brand new in kubeless 1.0.0. We now have CRDs that defines the way you're going to trigger the function. So you can trigger a function based on HTTP. You can trigger a function based on an event in NATS. And here you see that I have a MQTT trigger that's defined. We can see what's inside that, uh, that actual definition. I'm going to show it show to you what that uh, trigger looks like. You see that it's a CRD object, which defines a group MQTT triggers kubeless.io, okay? This is just the uh, CRD definition. Now, what do you need to be able to trigger your function based on the me messages in your MQTT broker? You need to deploy a controller, okay? You need to deploy a controller that's going to write, the, to watch, sorry, MQTT trigger objects. So you create this uh, little deployment here, MQTT deploy. So I just wrote this as a, as a Python based uh, controller watching those MQTT triggers object. You see that here, I just created a deployment using my custom image. I told you this is fresh out. Nobody has seen this before. This is just what you get for coming to the webinar. Let me look at the pods. So now you see that I have my broker and there is something missing. Where is my, ah, yeah, here it is. My MQTT trigger controller is running, but in the kubeless namespace, okay? So I have an MQTT broker. I have an MQTT trigger controller and I've created a, a, a CRD for those, uh, for those triggers. So what are those triggers, you ask? Right, and I say, you're right. Oh, no, this is not the one. So let me show you a trigger. A trigger represents a binding between an event and a function. And it's defined as a Kubernetes object, which is of type MQTT trigger. And you see that it says, hey, if there is an event in the topic kubeless, then send it to functions that uh, match this label selection. So we look at our pods, show labels, and we see that our foo function here has the label created by kubeless function foo, okay? So I'm going to create this binding MQTT example, I'm going to create this binding, oops, oh, already exists. So you see, I didn't clean it from when I was preparing for the demo. So MQTT 
triggers. There you go. You see that I have the, the foo here, trigger. Okay? Perfect. So, looks like everything is in place. So, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run uh, kubectl logs on the function. What do we see here? We just see the health probe running. Every minute, we have the health z uh, route being called, you know, with a, a get method. It, let's just wait to get the, the new one. And what I'm going to do is that in uh, another node, here you go, we just, we just saw the get, okay? In another uh, uh, tab here, I'm going to run a, an MQTT uh, event producer. So I'm going to send events into that MQTT uh, broker. I'm going to send kubeless, what's up? Okay, so kubeless is the topic and what's up is what I'm sending as a string in the event. Okay, you see that I'm sleeping every two seconds and I'm sending those to 182.168.9900. This is the node port of the MQTT service. So let's edit, let's, let's check the MQTT service uh, it is a note port on 32.459, okay? Yeah, I'm going to take my course on O'Reilly if I'm going too fast, you know? So let's, yeah, that's the shameless plug. Let's publish events. So I'm running this little script here that's connecting to my mini cube on the, on the high port where I have this note port service for MQTT. So I'm publishing those MQTT events. And if I go back here, you know, at some point, if everything works, <laughs> and I'm getting a little bit worried here because it says 32 and I didn't get anything. So let's see, I'm not getting, I'm not getting events. So this is not a good sign usually. Mm, this is not a good sign. Okay, this is not a good sign. So let's try to recover from this problem. I think what's happening is that MQTT, you see my controller, you know, is not quite uh, right. So I'm going to delete the trigger and recreate it. Foo. I'm going to delete the trigger and create it again. MQTT example. There you go. I'm going to create this trigger again. Okay, so it's created. I have, let's relaunch this, which is the event producing thingy. Let's just check the pod. Oh no, you see, this is too fresh. I shouldn't have showed you this. Took too much risk with this demo. And array is waiting. Okay, let me let me try to figure out. Get pods or oh, namespaces. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna try to go check in my MQTT trigger controller here what is going on. Dash n kubeless. So you see the log, the wonderful logs. It says trigger foo added. Uh, what's going on? The Still no messages, okay. So let's verify the service. Maybe I'm not publishing properly. The MQTT is 32459. Mm, and do I, have, do I have endpoints? Do I have endpoints? I have endpoints for my broker, okay. So this is correct. And if I look, if I look at my Python script, 32459, 32459, okay, this is correct. And I'm not getting, I'm not getting the events. Well, failed demo, you know what, that happens. I tried to show you something that was too fresh and it didn't work. But believe me, the NATS trigger controller works great. So you should use that instead of using this, uh, you know, too fresh uh, alpha, super alpha feature. Okay, bye bad. So next, uh, let's talk about cube apps and Ara is here waiting and uh, please Ara, take it away. Cool, thanks Seb. Um, 
hope my demo works. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, the, uh, so as, as Seb said, uh, we announced KubeApps 1.0 at KubeCon as well. So KubeApps is a dashboard in cluster dashboard for your Kubernetes cluster. And um, there, are, um, basically what you get is a UI where uh, your users, the users of your cluster can manage uh, certain aspects, especially applications and functions on your cluster. We will show more or less everything on the demo. So if you go to the next slide. Um, so on Wanderer, uh, there are several features that, that we announced. Uh, the first and more important is, is off. Uh, so prior to this release, um, basically this UI couldn't be exposed to the, to the external internet. You would need to create a proxy just the same way you, you would do a proxy for your Kubernetes dashboard. Uh, but there was no off, uh, so without that, basically wasn't safe to actually expose it on an actual uh, load balance uh, port, uh, sorry, service. And um, so now, basically, you can create to access the the dashboard, and we will show you in the demo. You will need to create service account uh, for your users, giving the permission that you want to give them. And, and then they will, uh, with the token, they will be able to access to the, to the, to the dashboard. Um, as long as they log in with, the, with their token, they will only, uh, all the um, API requests uh, to the Kubernetes API done uh, um, from that moment will be using that, that token. So only the, uh, the, the uh, permissions that they have, they will be able to do stuff in their cluster. Uh, not only off for the dashboard itself, but also for um, we for the uh, Helm repository. So if you have a Helm repo internal to your enterprise uh, that is not public and it has it needs some authentication with a the bearer token, um, now you can add it. Uh, that's also a new feature that we will be showing, uh, and we will be showing it with the uh, artifactory from JFrog. Uh, which is a very, um, very popular solution to have your Helm repository privately on your, on your organization. Um, we also added um, support for Helm upgrades. Uh, so if you, basically you can, you can upgrade your deployments just the same way that you do doing Helm upgrade and editing your values.yaml. Um, we have completed integration with kubeless uh, functions. Um, so when you deploy cube apps in your cluster, it will come also with a kubeless controller and you will have a nice UI where your users can see their functions that they have deployed, run the function, debug them, et cetera, et cetera. And last but not least, um, the open service broker, um, so for those uh, who don't know what the open source broker is, it's an API um, that allows you, it's, a, it's an API to define services in a common way. So Kubernetes uh, has a project called the Service Catalog, which is an implementation of this open service broker API, which allows you basically to uh, connect services outside your cluster. Uh, for example, like, um, I don't know, your uh, AWS uh, databases or your Azure databases into your cluster. So you're um, in, a, in a common way. So um, the, your users, the users of your cluster that want, to, um, that want to deploy a service into your cluster, but actually talking to, to an instance of these of this, uh, services, they can do that and request a new, um, a new for example, a new Azure uh, MySQL database um, if your organization uses that uh, in a very, very easy way. Um, so I'm going to be showing this, uh, all these features. So I'm going to start sharing my screen. So can you see my screen now? Yes, Sarah. 
looks pretty good. Okay, so um, so CubeApps uh, comes with a um, with a CLI tool um, that basically helps you uh, deploy CubeApps into your cluster. So if you do CubeApps app, it will deploy all the different components um, that we can see a little bit how it looks like. Um, so yeah, you can see that there, there is several services and several um, deployments associated with CubeApps. And um, then if you do CubeApps dashboard, it will open your default, um, your default uh, browser to the, to the CubeApps dashboard. And here we see the first, one of the first things that we want to demo is that you need actually uh, to have um, a Kubernetes API token that your, the administrator of your cluster has provided to you. Uh, so obviously I have here, I've created a service account uh, and this is the token that I'm going to copy to enter here. And from now on, every Kubernetes API call that I'm going to do through the uh, dashboard is going to be done passing that API token. So if I'm not authorized to do any of the things that I want to do, uh, it's, it's going to fail. Um, so, basically, on the when you install KubeApps, you have access to this table and incubator uh, repos, official repos, home repos for for the Kubernetes um, official ones. Uh, the this is um, all the all the things that you can install by default in your cluster. Um, one of the things that I've done uh, to test uh, the private repos is to actually use this functionality to deploy in my cluster uh, artifactory. Um, but this will work if you have an external to your cluster artifactory um, deployment. So uh, this is my artifactory deployment in, in CubeApps. So it will, it will show you, so you can see how it looks once you deploy an application into, into CubeApps. You have all the information here about the actual deployment, the services, basically uh, the information that you will get with, with Helm Info as well. And whoops. Um, so I'm going to open my Artifactory um, service here. So I've, I've deployed Artifactory in my cluster. Um, I'm going to log in. So just, just to show you, um, the, my current permissions is that uh, there are no users, there, there is no anonymous access to the repo. So actually for, to, to see anything on my repo, I have to be part of this group. And I've created beforehand um, a bird token using the JFrog Artifactory uh, a REST API. I've created a token that is part of this uh, readers group. Um, so only if I, if I log in into this repo with that token, I will be able to, to access it. Uh, so let's, let's check uh, the local repo. So it's just, I just created using Artifactory, a very simple uh, Helm repo, it's very easy. And I just uploaded uh, this DocuWiki um, chart, just an example. And I'm going to add it to my, my QApps um, dashboard. And the way I, I'll do that is uh, I'll go to this admin panel um, and I click on add repository, let's call it art and then I will uh, pass the URL of the Artifactory repo. And then here I can pass the bear token or basic auth, whatever I have defined, in this case a bear token um, that I have here for convenience.
uh, this is being added and if I click here and refresh, uh, so it, uh, I force QApps uh, to, to read the new repo. Um, I click here and here we have it, uh, the Doku wiki repo that it doesn't have a readme because it's just a simple one that I've created. Um, with just one version, the version that we have on our Artifactory repo, but I can now deploy um, private hub reports that I may have in my organization. Um, that's uh, one of the things I wanted to show. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to show as well is the integration that we have with Kubeless. Um, so Seb also already showed um, how Kubeless is, is very, uh, Kubernetes is native, so everything is built on CRDs, on, on uh, Kubernetes controllers, etc. Uh, and it also comes with a nice uh, CLI, Kubeless CLI, so you can have access to, to all these, these things easily. And th this is another UI that you can use, a part of the CLI, um, using, using QBAP. So um, here you have uh, a simple function that we've, we've created uh, with Node. And, and you can see the logs of that functions uh, and you can run it from here if you need to. You see the result of this function obviously is hello world as we had seen. Um, and you can also um, create deploying new functions from here. So um, it will create um, names for you if you don't want to think about it. And you can choose between Go, PHP, Ruby, um, and Python, uh, several versions of Python that we have runtimes for. Uh, and then you can create it uh, just like that. And it will do the same as uh, we, sh we saw with, with, um, with the CLI with set demo. So it will create uh, an actual um, CRD object for the function, a pod uh, that we can run. And you can see here the logs as well. The, that's uh, the second thing I wanted to show. Um, and finally, I wanted to show that uh, we have um, service uh, catalog integration. So the service uh, broker API. And what I've done prior to the demo is to uh, deploy the open service broker for Azure. So, Azure has uh, one of these uh, implementations, one of these brokers uh, for the Service Broker API. And uh, with that, you can basically, uh, obviously you have to add, when you, when you install the Open Service Broker for Azure, you will need to, to pass um, your username, uh, password, all the, um, for your Azure account. Uh, so it integrates well with your Azure account. And from here, you basically, once you do that, you can, uh, your users will be able to say, okay, I need for my service, I will need um, a new uh, Postgres um, SQL for, that I need to, to request. And they can provision it from, from here without having to uh, do, basically what the service uh, catalog is trying to prevent is this, um, when, when your users need a database or you need any other type of service, they don't have to go and open your ticket to your, to your ops uh, team and then get it back uh, maybe hours later. They can do it here from here directly. So um, because it takes a while, I already deployed um, uh, Nashville MySQL and uh, you can see that we can get uh, bindings which basically is uh, your actual uh, database hostname, password, uh, et cetera, that you can use for your, uh, for your services. So uh, if we wanted to, for example, um, deploy WordPress using that MySQL instead of the one that uh, we deploy on by default, so we could say WordPress, um, then, and this is a little bit, uh, we are trying to make it the user experience a little bit better because of the nature 
of, um, of Helm and how the, the values.yama works is not as straightforward, but something that we need to, we need to improve. Um, so basically here you would define uh, the data of your external database, the host name, the user, password, etc. And to try in the meantime, while the user experience is not ideal, to try to make it a little bit simpler, uh, you have access here to the bindings that you have defined. So if I select here a binding, uh, I can see here the data of that uh, database and um, I can copy, easily copy and paste all the, all the values there which again is, is not uh, an ideal user experience, but at least it helps uh, while you, you are editing your values.yaml to have here the, the information that you need. And uh, that's all I wanted to show. That's all the new features. So um, I'll stop sharing. So Seb, you want to continue? Sharing the slides? Yes. Thank you very much, Ara. That was an amazing demo and everything worked. And uh, Cube Apps has gone a, a long way and the, the UI is really looking, you know, really, really sharp. Uh, hope you, hopefully you, you think so too. And with the integration with the, uh, the values.yaml, we can now, you know, edit the, uh, uh, the charts before launching them, we can upgrade them. And the, the, the service broker with the integration uh, is really, really amazing with, uh, uh, with Azure. So if you want to know more, check out our, uh, our blog on, um, on uh, medium, medium.com slash bitnami dash perspective. You'll see lots of blogs. Uh, check out cubeless.io, check out cubeapps.com. Everything is open, open source, of course. Apache license v2, github.com slash cubeless, github.com slash cubeapps. And before I let you go, let's go back to my demo, which I managed to fix. So I'm sending my events and let's look at the logs of my function again. And here you see, we see our events going. You see that you know, uh, we you see that here I was getting my health. And then when I started sending my events in my MQTT broker, I started receiving my WhatsApp here. What was happening in my test is that I didn't uh, run my, uh, uh, my broker in the correct namespace. So, you know, I couldn't uh, talk to my, uh, to my broker. Okay. So that was a tiny, tiny little mistake, but you know, it got fixed. So, Thank you very much. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this, uh, this webinar. Stay in touch uh, at Ara Pulido and at Seb Goa and let us know what you think about those projects. If you want to engage with us, that would be terrific. File issues, send PRs, you're more than welcome. And uh, let's grow those projects together. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much.